Welcome to Bloodborne. Um, I recently picked up the Old Hunters DLC for this game. This is, I think, my favorite PlayStation 4 exclusive. Time to begin the hoont. I could drop it in here too. Oh, not here. Here? Yeah. All right. So I've got my coffee. I'm um, just sort of waking up. What's up, Shaman King? What's up, Notias? Love this game. I'm doing well, thank you. Alright, back in the Hunter's Dream. So, um, I played through Hunt Bloodborne back when it first came out. I think it came out in um, 2017. Might have been before that. It was like really early on, actually. Easily my favorite PS4 exclusive. Just so unique, and there's a lot of really good games on the on the console, but Bloodborne stands out. You know, really, it really does. It's unique. So, I played through the first game. I was flying by the seat of my pants in it. Like, it's so atmospheric um, that I swear to God, I didn't really learn the systems, how deep, you know, like the mechanics can get. But I did play through it. I beat it. And I didn't really get, like, the best ending. I think I defeated Garman at the end. So I did get that far. And then, like, the Moon Presence came and basically took me out. Like, in a cutscene. Like, I didn't fight it. Um... I see that there are three comments, but for some reason I'm not seeing three comments. Maybe I'll set it to live chat. There we go. I love the mythologies Miyazaki constructs in his games and the detail he puts into it. Yeah, he really does put a lot of work into his stuff. It's just so different. Like Dark Souls, I love the Souls series as well, obviously. Um, well, specifically Dark Souls 1 and 3. I think Dark Souls 2, um, it's not bad. It's still a good game, but it's not Miyazaki's work, you can tell, because the mythology and the story and the and the concepts explored in Dark Souls 2 are not as um, interesting and it's also it's it's not just that it's disconnected it's just not as interesting so anyway on Bloodborne there's a there was a DLC called the Old Hunters DLC that came out and I didn't buy it um, because I just wasn't able to at the time and I kind of forgot about it for a while. And then I got into other things, and, you know, I was busy with other shit. 
And so recently, like, like, I don't know, like, beginning of the month, I picked up the old Hunter's DLC, and I've been playing through it, but I've been playing through it really slow, because I'm, I want to savor it, you know? Because I heard it's, you know, really good. Like, that's one of the other reasons why I didn't buy it before. I usually, when I hear that there's DLC out, even on a game I love, I don't jump on it right away. I usually wait to see, like, what the, res you know, whether it's worth it or not. So when the um, Artorias of the Abyss of DLC came out for the first Dark Souls game, I didn't buy it right away. So my first playthrough ever of Dark Souls 1, I played my first couple, did not have the Artorias DLC. And only recently, when Dark Souls Remastered came out, did I actually buy... Well, I didn't buy it because it came with it. So I played through the, the Artorias of the Abyss DLC um, after that. And as much as I enjoyed that... Um, I don't know that it was worth the money because it really isn't that much gameplay. There's basically, uh, you know, two bosses and one optional boss. The environments are okay. Like, the setting isn't bad, you know. It's probably, like, pretty, pretty okay for a first out, but I don't know that I would pay that much. And then, when Dark Souls 3 came out... Because uh, I didn't get Scholar of the First Skin, sk uh, the F Scholar of the First Sin at all. I never played it because, again, Dark Souls 2 just doesn't doesn't hit the same way that the other two do. So when Dark Souls 3 came out, again, I played through it the first time. Uh, Ashes of Ariandel, I didn't pick up until like a while later, and I thought it was pretty good. Um, again, I like the atmosphere of it, but I felt like Ashes of Ariandel probably didn't have to be DLC. They could have just put that in a painting, just like they did in Dark Souls 1, where they had that hidden level in the painting. Um, and I didn't get into the Ring City because I felt a little bit burned by Ashes of Ariandel. Like, I thought that it was alright, but, um, again, I probably shouldn't have spent the money on it, and that was the only DLC that I actually paid for. And then, uh, many, much time passed, and recently, and you can see it on a channel here, I did a couple streams, I did finally buy the Ring City, because I kept, you know, listening to uh, the soundtrack, and it has some of the really great music in there, um, in particular, uh, Slave Knight Gale, as well as Dark Eater Medir. And I kept hearing about how great the Ring City is, and so I finally caved in and said, okay, I'll get the Ring City. And yeah, it's the best DLC that they've made. Well, next to this one. So, I haven't finished the Old Hunters, but I did finally buy that one too, and I gotta say that I wish I had, I had not slept on this shit. So... Uh, yeah, you're gonna have a lot of fun with the bosses in this DLC, they're top tier, yeah. Well, I've already fought, I've, as you can see, I've already fought Ludwig, the Accursed, who is probably my favorite boss so far. I've also beaten the uh, Living Failures, which are basically the boss after this. And I've, be I've beaten Lawrence, the first Vicar, which is a boss you have to kind of backtrack for, that's optional. But, I mean, why wouldn't you fight that boss, right? I mean, there's literally bosses in the main game that I didn't fight. But I did go back and fight. In this playthrough, I've beaten Abriatas. I hope that's how you say it. I didn't know about her, but I found her, and I, I beat her. And uh, after I'm done with the DLC, or maybe before, I'm going to uh, go after Amygdala. Because I, I didn't know that Amygdala was a boss. and I mean, I found out later, but I didn't know my first playthrough. Because I usually, when I do these, I don't, I don't do any, you know, research. I don't go online. I want to go in blind. And so I didn't know about some of the optional bosses in Bloodborne. Um, okay, here we go. Um, shit, I'm just going to have to go in there.
Get a hit in, get a hit in. Oh shit. Woo! I hope he keeps doing this, because that's like where the openings are at. Yeah, watch out for that shit. The charge will kill you with one hit. That's it, he's dead. The charge will kill you. You it's a it's a certain scream that you hear. That's how you know that he's about to do it, but yeah. That's such a mean name, Living Failures. Yeah, well in the context of the story it makes sense. Um But yeah, I hear I hear you. And they and the funny thing is is the Living Failures are, are they were probably the easiest boss I fought in the DLC. So they, they actually are failures. <laughs> so on my current playthrough, I'm going to be fighting against Maria of the Astral Clock Tower, uh, which is a favorite boss from what everybody says. I haven't fought her yet. Um, and then after Maria, I think I go into the fishing hamlet. And I think there's a couple of there's a, there was a lot of hunters in this DLC too, a lot of hunter character uh, uh, fights. But yeah, after Maria, which is a favorite that everyone loves, Maria, um, then I gotta deal with uh, the fishing hamlet, a couple of hunters, and then the orphan of cause. And the orphan of cause is the one that's giving me like fucking heart palpitations just thinking about it, because that boss is fucking crazy as shit from what I've seen. But um, what I'm going to probably do in this playthrough is, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to fight, maybe I'll do a little bit of the main story, go back to the, to the non-DLC content, and now I'm ready to fight Ludwig, this fucking whirly gig saw, um, I also found the League, uh, Covenant, which is the shit too. But, um, when I, uh, oh, hello, fellow League member. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things about Bloodborne is how classy everybody is. Anyhow, is he going to go in or are you waiting on a, another person? Don't make fun of his helmet. It's for protection. <laughs> it looks like a fucking horn. A lampshade. Orphan is super aggressive. Is this game still in active in multiplayer? Yeah. No. Th yeah, dude. The multiplayer is still very active. A lot of people still play it. Um, pretty much all the Souls games have pretty active communities even to this day. Yeah, people still play all of them. The only the only community that is dead is Demon Souls, and the only reason is because they turned off the servers. If Demon Souls servers were still up, they would still be active. I can promise you. Paying attention to the beckoner, which is fine. Oh, I mistimed that. Uh oh. Oh shit.
Hi. Yeah, I think the one thing I probably do wrong in Bloodborne, or at least that people who are like, who play this game a lot, is uh, I do not dress my character for um, like stat advantage, you know? Like the people who wear the helmets and stuff, they're, they're basically trying to get the most out of their build, right? I don't do that. I dress for fashion. So I'm like, yeah, this guy looks cool. I don't care if these items suck. He's gonna look like this now. That's why I even have this this weapon. My third, my threaded cane is my main weapon because it's fucking to me. This is like fashion born. I mean, if you could play a game where you where you make a custom character that, that looks like a fucking sir, why wouldn't you do it? On top of that, I could you know. So I'm gonna dress like this. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't care if it's not the best, it's not the optimum. <laughs> I'll just wait until this guy gets back. Actually, you know what, I'm going to go back and get some, uh, because I see that I'm, I've used a couple of, um, um, fuck out of here, bitch. Oh, I'm all, I'm maxed out on pebbles. Sorry, but I need your shit. Alright. And I'm ready to help out. Fuck that, we follow fashion souls. Yep. May, you wanna try this shit again? If May was in the league, you should summon, um, bring in the, uh, another, um, hunter, because you can. Whoo, what the fuck? It's the problem it, with, um, s some of these bosses. They just fucking, woof, F, rip, rest in pepperonis. One hit, Jesus Christ. Why even have a health bar? That's alright. He'll probably get killed. I just want to help out. It doesn't matter if I win or not. This is like a zero consequence thing. But I did... I, I like fighting Ludwig. I wish I could fight him multiple times. Especially for that second phase. I think if you play with non-meta equipment, it's probably going to make you a better player because it leaves less room for error on your part. I looked away for a second and you died. Yeah, it's, I got hit once. And it was kind of, um, that's the thing about these fights, like, some of these bosses, no, a lot of these bosses, they have, like, a couple of attacks that will just kill you, like, you're probably not going to survive because they do so much damage. And my guy is not, he's no slouch, you know, I've got, I'm on New Game Plus, so that's one thing you should know, which means everything's tougher, but, uh, you know, 45 vitality, I have pretty good health, I think, uh, 50 skill, because I'm pretty much maxed out on, well, I, I, I made a skill build when I started, this is the character I started the game with, I didn't make like a new build or start a new game or anything like that. And um, I was thinking, well, I like the threaded cane. I picked the weapon, and I was like, I'm gonna. Guess, I guess it's a skill weapon, so I'm gonna build up my skill stat. But I, again, I haven't delved really deep into varying builds. Okay, this is probably May again. Hopefully, it's not. Hopefully, it's somebody else. Hey, 
Uh, never fear, 1911. Yeah, it's it's May again. I got fucking spanked last time. All right, let's do this. I like I do like his outfit, just not the helmet part. Alright, let's go. That's how I died last time. I hit him, but I didn't do shit. You gotta take your time. If you get greedy, you're gonna die. Ugh. Shit. Uh-oh, lunch. Yeah, when he when he goes wah. It's probably not a good idea to fight up here, it's a little too tight. Oh, I was just gonna jump or roll. Sorry, dude. Oh, and you died too, so I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, this game has some of the best lore, very Lovecraftian. Do those bosses have to be so screamy? Only the beasts. That charge attack seems pretty crap compared to Ludwig's blade. Um. It, well, I mean, like style-wise, yeah, but the charge attack will kill you. It's it's it does a lot of damage. He has like three attacks that will that could one shot you. One is the charge attack. The other one is where he jumps up onto the ceiling and drops down on you. Uh, and then there's a swipe that's that's like deceptively fast that he scrapes along the ground. It's just a single swipe. It does a ton of fucking damage though. One hit took half the health bar. Yeah, I think that May, this person that's trying to beat Ludwig, because I'm just trying to help him, um, he's either going to want to solo him instead, which means he's going to have to get good. No pun intended, not, like, not trying to be mean, but if you solo the boss, they, act they actually have less health. So that the more people you summon into to help you, the more health the boss gets. So it actually doesn't make the match easier. It can make it harder because if you bring in like two, let's say you bring in two other hunters to help you with a boss. If those guys get killed early on, like in the beginning, you have to fight that boss with all that extra health now. So, it's going to be even harder for you to do that. Um, so he may want to, he may have to just try to do it by himself. Or... He needs to be really slow, like like just get hits in and then back off and then get a hit in and back off. Cause greed is the greed is the killer in this in these games. That swipe right there will kill you. Just get a hit in and back off. 
If you can see, like, there are certain attacks where you do get, like, a good number of hits, but... Oof. Oh, that, that, he doesn't do that often, where he gallops towards you. That's a big one, too. Oh, I got greedy. Come on, May, don't dick, don't be stupid. Actually, if we get him to the, to, um, if we can get him to the second phase, he's actually easier in, in a lot of ways. Because with the, like, he's got, like, really erratic moves in, in this form. Come on, man, get out of there. Get out of there, bro. And you can also repost him. Oh shit, you got charged. Go heal, go heal. He does a backswipe, it doesn't do a ton of damage. Ooh, shit. Uh oh, charge. Oh no. Get it. Why? <laughs> Such a tanky boss, yeah. Comple oh, you mean like me? I think the saw is the best thing on Ludwig, but I could switch back to the Holy Blade. I like the reach the saw has too, though. Let's let's try the Holy Blade. I, I'm not risking anything, honestly. My Whirly Gig Saw is plus eight. My Holy Blade is plus nine. I need to like I need more rocks um, because I've been trying a lot of weapons. So I played through the game mostly with my Threaded Cane, which is now plus ten, and it got me through the whole game like easily, right? Um, but I wanted to play around with other weapons. It's just that I don't like the designs of most of these weapons. Like, they just don't seem to fit my look, you know. Uh, but I did manage to get this Uncanny Holy Blade up to plus nine. Um, which, uh, my understanding is it's pretty fucking good. So we're going to give that a shot. And um, I do have the Moonlight Sword as well. But it's really pointless because I don't have uh, this Holy Moonlight Sword. But my um, Arcane isn't very high, so I'm not really going to get much out of it. I mostly have a high skill, and I'm also building my strength. It's up to 40, which is scales pretty good, right? So the um, so some of these weapons, like uh, the Blade of Mercy, which I got off of the Hunter of Hunters is uh, pretty good for my character's build because it is a skill weapon, but it also has some arcane that I get... Yeah, I'm being summoned. But it has really bad range, right? So uh, we're going to try this, but I don't know if it's going to work better or not. And I don't want to use my bolt paper or my fire uh, or any of that shit because... Yeah, I mean, if I use it and I get killed, I've just wasted it, so... I don't think that it's necessary. It gives you an edge, sure, but it's not necessary. Get a hit in. Uh-oh. Are you alive? Okay. It's also slow, but then again. Let's see here. Woo! 
Miss me, bitch. Got, don't get out from underneath them. That, that was good. Got some good hits in there. Uh-oh, charge. <laughs> Somebody's wising up. Dude, get out of there. No, no, no. Oh, good. We, we're, we got him on the almost to the second phase. He's got to get a couple of hits in. There we go. In case you're wondering why this is the case, this uh, Ludwig used to be a dude. He got turned to a monster, but now he's remembering his human self. My guiding moonlight. Now it's going to really pick up. And the music is going to be the shit too. This is why I like fighting this boss. Back off, back off, back off! Oh, shit, I shouldn't have backed away. I hope you live. Maybe he'll win. Well, if I, if I, if he does, then I'll consider my my assistance to have been uh, not fruitless. My death was for was was not for nothing. But I will come over here and ring a bell and see if he uh, shows up. Then I know he didn't win, but he could. The second phase of Ludwig, I think, is actually a bit easier than the first one if you don't. Because he's his his attacks are a little bit easier to read, I think. There are some that will that are extremely powerful, but if you stay close to him, uh, you don't really have to worry about those. So, yeah, he does have better range, but he's also like less I don't know chaotic, I guess, when he attacks. So. So I guess Twitch is dead, or is going to be. Hey, Great Indoors, I showed up instead. How disappointing. I'm going to try and help somebody beat Ludwig at once. If I can do it, I'll only go get some... Uh, I need some um, blood vials. it might be him he may have died uh yeah so if i is this is this amy let me see
Oh no, it's somebody else. Aliaga. What? That would have been bad. Bell silence? What are you doing? Oh, I think he dropped. Yeah, I think he disconnected. Session lost. There are theories that it might be in the same universe. Is this the same universe as Dark Souls? Vadi Vidya made a, a video about it. Um there are theories. I think there it's more like wish wishful thinking for most people though. Um I think people really want that to be the case. But it's not uh there's no real evidence for it, but I think it's just one. Well, the thing about the moonlight sword cuz I know people like use things like, "Oh, well, it has a moonlight sword in it." They they put the Moonlight Sword in all of their games. They even put the Moonlight Sword in Armored Core as like a weapon that you can give to your mecha. So it's more like a... I would think of the Moonlight Sword for From Software as the... Uh, as... Like, there's a, another developer that had like, uh, I don't know, like the Moogle for Squaresoft. You know, they might put it in everything. Or maybe something else like that. I don't know. Oh, a May did not make it. That's a shame. We can do this together, May. I did not expect that. I apologize to the person. Is that like a dead doggy? No, it was a... Uh, it was a cleric for the... Uh, this is a cleric of the healing church, I think. And, um... He went to... Uh, well, basically he was corrupted by the by the blood and turned into a beast and has all but forgotten all of his humanity and I think there's a there was a theory or some lore that he had a horse or something and I think that they may have like melded the horse and the man together which is why he looks like that so basically yeah he's like something out of fucking Color Out of Space. Speaking of which, if you guys have never seen it, Color Out of Space, 
the movie. It's I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. It's uh, it's it's creepy as shit. Oh, okay, it's not just fun, but like Nicolas Cage is in it, and he is at his most Nicolas Cageiest. And um, I really enjoyed the movie Colorado Space. Uh, it's like a, it's just like a straight up like, you know, kind of B horror film, but with some pretty decent effects. And it does a good job of, uh, I would say overall, of translating Lovecraft to film, which, um, you know, they, they, when we used to do that back in the day, you know, from beyond, from the 80s, the reanimator, uh, there was even like a, a sort of Lovecraft uh, anthology film that you can't find anymore um, uh, called the Necronomicon. Book of the Dead, I think it's called, Necronomicon, Book of the Dead. I have it, but you literally can't find it. I had to go, like, you know, to the internet and, and like, dig it up. Like, they don't sell it anywhere. You can't get it on Blu-ray. You can't get a digital copy. Um, and I think that uh, Colorado Space is a good is a good movie. And the guy who made it, um, he's hoping to make more uh, sort of Lovecraftian films. And I hope he does. His next film project, I think, is going to be either uh, Shadow Over Innsmouth or Mountains of Madness. I think, I think it's going to be Mountains of Madness, um, which would be dope. Dope as fuck, because he's good. And I, th I heard that Nicolas Cage was going to be in all three of them, just playing different characters, so... Lovecraftian stuff is hard to bring to the screen. Yes, it is. But the, I'm saying that there is... I think that we've come to accept the fact that it's difficult to translate that stuff to the screen. So good directors find ways to do it that are extremely clever. I think that one of the best Lovecraftian movies, um, in my opinion, isn't even based on any of his work, but it's clearly an, a, a love letter to his work. And that is In the Mouth of Madness, the John Carpenter movie with Sam Neill. Um, that is... I love that movie. I mean, it, it, like when you really think about what he's done with the way that he put it together, it's so good. Like, just the way that it's put together, it's, it's so good. I love In the Mouth of Madness. Um, but, like, The Thing is Lovecraftian movie. It's also amazing. John Carpenter, again, if you never see The Thing, I, what the hell are you doing? Go watch The Thing right now. Don't, don't, don't hang around here with me. Um, there's Annihilation is basically Colorado Space, but sort of, um, you know, uh, a little with a twist with women, basically. But it's good. Like, I, I, you know, it, it's not, it's not, they're not... They're not, it's not a girl power movie by any stretch. It's not a girl power movie. So, Annihilation, very good. That's Natalie Portman and um, uh, Tessa Thompson and some other people. Really good movie. Is, it's basically Colorado Space, but it's just militarized and it has women in it. But it's, it's the same sort of plot. Uh, there was something else, too. I was, uh, there's another one that uh, does it really well. But yeah, there's plenty of cosmic horror films that do the job. You know, I just saw um, a movie that you could say is that Deep Rising. Earlier this week, I saw Deep Rising, which came out in the 90s. Sorry about that. It starred Treat Williams as the main character. <laughs> I don't know. Treat Williams is so... I don't know what he's doing in movies sometimes, but... And, uh, because he looks like a lounge singer. I just can't see him, like, as a, a leading man. He's just, his face is just not quite right. But, yeah, Treat Williams is directed by Stephen Summers. It's basically about this guy who, you know, um, there's this, there's this large luxury vessel, like the biggest luxury vessel ever built with all the richest people on it. And it gets attacked by a sea monster and at the same time there are these like bank robbers or criminals or whatever that are trying to like pull a heist on that ship and they get escorted there by another ship a smaller boat that's headed by a captain who's basically just some guy like that's just taking jobs for money and of course he's the, the he's the hero he ends up being the hero 
But this giant sea monster they fight against is basically like a Cthulhu monster because it's just like tentacles with mouths and it's like beyond comprehension. And I had a lot of fun watching that. And then I saw another movie, same day, with uh, my friends called Leviathan, which stars Peter Weller and who's the guy who played Robocop. Um, and um, uh, Ernie Hudson, who is uh, Winston from the Ghostbusters. Um, and the fucking, the, the, the wet bandit, like the skinny dude from Home Alone, you know, <laughs> and the colonel from the Rambo movies, and it's basically like they, they, you know, they're these sort of deep sea divers, and, and they're mining under, underwater, and they find this, like, sunken Russian ship, you know, and they go in there, and they're, and there's, like, this, um, some kind of organism that essentially starts changing the crew. So there's pl plenty of movies that do it pretty well, you know. And I, I know that it, it's it's not as simple as that. It tends to be more psychological. It tends to be more like be like sort of transcending comprehension. But I think that a lot of really really good attempts have been made, and I think that uh, people don't mind seeing that stuff. There was even a recent film. I didn't watch it myself, but there was a recent film called Underwater. Which also tried to do this, and it was with um, um, Kirsten Stewart. And there's they're underwater, and there's like some, you know, Cthulhu monster under there with them. I, there's just so many. Dagon is a good one. That's also really old from the 80s. So, um, I think the guy may have won, or he gave up. Did I ring the bell? No, I didn't. Oh, yes, I did. I'm, I'm gonna go get the uh, blood vials really quick. Let me see what you guys are saying. Um, <clears throat> Guillermo del Toro was talking about wanting to adapt Mountains of Madness, but it never happened. Yeah. If you haven't seen The Void, I saw The Void. That's good, too. You should check it out. It's nothing amazing, but it has some really nice practical effects considering the budget. Yeah, I like The Void. I thought it was good. It was, again, you know, when you're making a film and you're trying to do horror, I think there's a couple of ways you do it. You fuck with people's brains so that they don't know what is real and what's not real in the film. And you, um, you also make them question... So, like, you basically, like, yeah, you put... You make them, you make, you, you can try to make it meta. And that's what Mount, Mouth of Madness, in the Mouth of Madness did, is it made it meta. In, in, on like so many levels. And I think that's how you leave an impression. Because you're not really going to be, I mean, unless, you know, people are like, of the faint of heart, you know. Like, you're not really going to be able to like, scare people to the degree that, uh, you know, that they're like, not going to be able to sleep at night with a movie unless you are really clever because a lot of times with, with really good horror it's not about what you show them it's about what you don't show them but you imply and that can be difficult because people also want to pay off but like mouth of madness did that like they you know there was a scene with these like monsters chasing sam neill's character down a hallway and you get a glimpse at of them in the film but you don't really get a good look at them. And I think that that's good because it's sort of like, you know, uh, it, it engages the imagination. And that's the thing, like with, with uh, Color Out of Space did a good job of that. Annihilation did a good job of that. Even though they showed you stuff, they made you say, well, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing this thing now. But I don't know that what I'm looking at is really like what it is. I'm looking at maybe a... Uh, uh, a symptom of what it is, or a side effect of what it is, or, an, or you know, an element of what it is, but I don't know what it actually is. And keeping people guessing is how you, like, leave an impression with them, you know? So, and I think that, you know, like, I, I've said this many times, Hollywood is shit right now. They are. By and large, they're shit. But there are a few people left in Hollywood, left in entertainment, that want to make movies that genuinely give a shit about what they're doing. And I think the guy who directed Color Out of Space is one of those people. Like, there's literally no wokeness in the movie. He just played it straight. He just wanted to freak people out. He wanted to try this task of interpreting, you know, a Lovecraftian book into a movie. 
And I think he did a good job, because he didn't do it on the surface level, like, say, Zack Snyder when he adapted The Watchmen. You know? Alien. Yeah, that's a good one, too. I think that, to a degree, um... What's the movie? A, a silent? Is it a silent place? A quiet place. A quiet place. That's also kind of like that too, you could say. Because again, there's so much mystery. The only problem with a quiet place is that it ends on a hopeful note. And I think Lovecraftian stories, um, good ones, should not. They should. Oh, they should end on a note that brings about a sense of existential dread. And that's, going back to FromSoft's games, that's what I like about From Software's games, is that they don't, they're not happy stories. The Dark Souls games, Bloodborne, they don't end on a happy note per se. They end on a note that's like, at best, it's bittersweet. You know, like you're just like, well, at least I got closure. <laughs> but it's not, like, good, you know? Mm. Um, what's your opinion on Pan's Labyrinth? Oh, Pan's Labyrinth is fantastic. Is it woke, though? Um, I think a little bit. Uh, I think that there is a little bit, because... Uh, Toro, Del Toro does seem to want to elevate women over men morally, and I think that Pan's Labyrinth displays that. Maybe my issue is, is that the two central characters outside of the girl in that movie, and outside, because I don't care that there's a girl main character, I think that... Uh, a, a story like Pan's Labyrinth, an isekai, if you will, where, you know, a, a child enters another world. It works better if that child is a girl, um, depending on the tone of your story. It can, right? Like uh, Alice in Wonderland, like Wizard of Oz. Like, those stories work well because there's a girl in it, and she's essentially using her... Um, uh, I guess you could say her feminine way of communicating with people... Her, her social power as a means by which to progress through the story. And I think that's, that's the case for stories like Alice in Wonderland as well as Wizard of Oz. And I think Pan's Labyrinth is a kind of Wizard of Oz or Alice in Wonderland story that's sort of like overlaid into, uh, on this backdrop, you know. Chronicles of Narnia is like that too, I guess. But, um... I, 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 the, my, but beyond that though, so I don't mind the little girl, I don't mind all that stuff, but beyond that, where I do have issue, looks like I found somebody, is, um, the, the way in which he paints the, the sort of fascist military man as a little bit cartoonishly evil. There is, like, a desire to sort of show why he is this way, but it's not really explored. So it kind of comes across as a little bit of a cartoonish thing, right? You're going to lose health just standing there with the... Oh, good, we got another person. Um, so yeah, there is that. And then you got uh, the woman who sort of is like a... Um, so the mom, okay, of the girl, she, she seems to... Um, they make him look like she chose this man because she had no choice. Like she was just doing what she thought was best for her uh, daughter. And I, I dislike that. This is about the mother of the girl. And then there's the caretaker who's like part of this resistance movement and she's, you know, like it's I, I think that there is a little bit of this, and I know that people will like say that they disagree, and that maybe I'm over, um, you know, that I'm over, I don't know, overstating it or something. But the fact is, I think that that is something that 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 looks like the oh shit, dude. Uh, 
Um, I don't know if you guys get it because I don't. I don't want to like. Get out of it, get out of there. Watch out for the rain. It's a lot of biting. Oh shit. Jizz all over her face. There we go. I noticed that when I help people fight Ludwig, um, they never skip the this cinematic. They always watch it. You were at my side all along. My true mentor. My guiding moonlight. Mm -hmm. Beckoner has died. Shame. But I do have someone else I can help. He 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 has to watch out for that charge and he has to watch out for that when the sword lights up, that's when it's gonna do more damage. I'm gonna try the um I'm gonna try the uh the whirly gig again. Because I know that beasts take more damage from serrated weapons. And I know that this is one plus down, so it's not a plus nine, it's a plus eight. But I think it's going to be fine. Let me go get... Uh, did I ring the bell? I already forgot. Okay. I'm going to go get some more uh, vials. Oh no, I didn't die, so the vial isn't... Okay, never mind then. I guess I don't really need it. I'm not going to use 20 in a fight. Shh, quiet. Just, just go, just lay down, guys. Just lay down. Just lay down. Stop it. Jesus Christ. Alright, let's see what you guys are saying. Uh, Bird Box never shows the monster, but there is a drawing of the creatures. Some of them resembles Cthulhu. Yeah, I heard that. I have never seen Bird Box. Um, I have kind of a hate boner against Netflix. Uh, The Mist is... Yeah, I love The Mist. Very good. Very good movie. Really great ending. The ending is better than the book. Stephen King said, holy shit, I wish I'd come up with that. Uh, let me see. Berserk manga is kind of Lovecrafty. Well, Berserk is the inspiration for the Dark Souls games. A lot of it comes from that. I might be one of the few out there who thinks Pan's Labyrinth falls flat. Nice imagery, but it's basically from. But that's basically it for me. It's completely over the top. Like you want to say, look, fascism is really bad. Yeah, like they don't present him as they present him as borderline not human, and I think that's the. The thing is, is that Pan's Labyrinth is highly imaginative, and there's a lot there that I do like. But some of the stuff I don't like is shows where Teldoro falls falls flat as a kind of storyteller. And I know, I know that he's woke, right? All right, let's go. Whoa! 
What, what kind of name is Otsuka Miyu? That sounds like weed shit to me. Oh, oh, get out. You gotta, don't want to be underneath him. He does a lot of damage. It's like trample attack that he does. No, fuck it. I'm doing enough damage with this weapon, but... What was that confused neighing he did? In recent times from Hollywood at the Joker movie was good. It's a bit slow. No. The Joker movie is solid. I'm saying that there are movies that are coming that come out good, but like the whole thing is so the whole culture is so paused that I'm not trying to like find the good. I'm just like passively waiting to hear about something that doesn't like toe the line. You know what else is good is... Oh shit, where is he? Um, we're gonna switch it up. Oh, 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 oh we're good. Let's go, let's go! Dude, dude, dude! No, oh, Jesus Christ, you're supposed to... Uh-oh. Back, get back. <laughs> oh shit, I'm alive. God, we almost had him. We missed. My God. Jesus Christ, we almost had him.
If the other person hadn't died right at the end of phase one, we would have beaten them for sure. All right. Uh, let's see. Also, the two stories don't seem to mix well. Well, I, I think that he really wanted to, like, do some commentary on, um... F fascism, I suppose. But it wasn't just that, though. Like, there's a bit... There's, there, there's also... There's also a, a commentary on patriarchy. So, like, this man wants a son. Like, that's, like, the, that's like his goal, right? And there is some attachment to a father that sort of put this on him because he keeps looking at his pocket watch and, you know, this, like, fascist general or whatever he is, right? And he wants a son to carry on his legacy, and he's going to use this woman to do it. And she's this, the woman is the, is the uh, mother of the girl from the movie. And she's, you know, really sick, and, but she's pregnant. And the little girl wants to protect her brother from this man because this man, you know, he's going to raise his son to be a fascist or whatever, right? So she's got to hide the baby away. And so it's basically about a girl taking her brother away from the bad man that is the brother's biological father and the dying mother who chose to, by the way, who chose this man to be, to be the father of her child is now only the victim right and she's just dying and so she's going to use magic to escape into this other world which of course might also be an allegory for her like completely going crazy and um you know and all that but but you see like there is and of course it's basically trying to break this cycle of patriarchal violence or something Otsu Ots otsuka miyu that's weeb shit. Is this an anime? Are you an anime character? Whoa, hold on. Wait till we get inside. B stay mad. Hose mad. <laughs> Brother. You didn't see that coming? Dude, he opens up with that every time. I have that weapon too, but I don't know if I'm gonna... Watch out, get out of there! Oh! Shit, that's the big one. I don't know how I live. Wog. That wog, though. Shit! Mm. 
can still the music as part of Sif's theme from Dark Souls. This theme? I don't know, is it? Sif's theme is really good too, though. I don't know if it's the same one. Quick question about living in Chicago. I have a friend that's going to move from Texas to Chicago this summer. Do you have any advice about acclimating? Um, is your friend white? <laughs> Chicago's a pretty far less city in terms of its government, and there are parts of, like, really far left. Like, there's, like, a fucking communist party here, and it's, it's fucking fucked, man. Get back, get back! Oh shit, what? The Beckoner just died! What was he doing? Aw, oh, what a shame. Uh, both he and his wife, both white Christians. I was thinking more of the weather. Oh! <laughs> um, well, I mean, Chicago is, uh, it's on a lake. So, I, I th the, the summers get really humid. And the winters can get really snowy. Um, it's a land of extremes, is like how I like to describe it. Basically, uh, it's, it's a, it, it gets really cold and it gets really hot. But that usually only lasts a little while. I don't know where they're coming from, so I guess... what Did you say we're from? We're moving from Texas. Oh, so it's definitely going to be way more humid. It's not nearly as dry. I don't know if they're going to like that. I don't know if they're going to be able to deal with that. Um... And, yeah, it's definitely wet, wet, wetter and drier. Or, I'm sorry, wetter and more humid. Uh, they will probably be not as hot as they're accustomed. But some of the really hot days will probably be worse. And it'll definitely be colder than what they're accustomed to as well. India does have communist parties, but rarely do they get elected. Uh, like, a lot of parties are, like, center-left. Yeah, I, I think most of the world is basically, like, further left than the United States. I basically put that together. I think that most of the world is further left. I even think Japan is further left. Because um, when I hear about, like, for example, I thought the people who were closest to us were, like, maybe Canadians and the British, right? Let's do this shit. And be careful. I want to fight Maria once today. I want to give her a try. Dude, you get hit every time! This dude literally opens up with the same attack every time, and you get hit. No, nigga. I heard that. Oh, shit. Using sperm, sperm, sperm. I got spermed. Out of his <laughs> thing on his neck. I didn't know you had an autistic screeching emote in the game. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't like gotten all the emotes. So, well, on the plus side, I can go back to the Hunter's Dream, 
really quick and get my uh, blood vials back up and then come back in and help because by the time I get back he'll they'll probably be dead Um, yeah, so, uh, women have no agents and don't oppress them by assigning responsibility to them. Yeah. All right, I'm going back. Hopefully it's not too late to help this dude out. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Great Indoor says, and didn't Pan's Labyrinth end with, quote, and then the communists stepped in and saved the day or something like that? I don't remember it that well as I forgot about this movie fairly quickly. Well, I mean, there was a revolution. And, and almost it, whenever, whenever there's um, stories in, in movies, I think most of the time when they do stories about people like rising up and overthrowing their oppressors it's always like a communist narrative i honestly do think that i wouldn't i would think that on some level even star wars is is sort of doing that although in star wars they don't make it clear like what they just basically say evil empire and you know good rebels so at the very least even if george lucas himself who i've heard criticized capitalism Plenty of times, so I, I think that he is probably at least a moderate lefty, you know. Um, he probably didn't want to, like, go that far, but maybe he just saw, well, you know, empires, monarchies are evil. So, and of course he was borrowing from, um, uh, borrowing from, like, you know, Kurosawa films and spaghetti westerns and swashbuckling movies and Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers. So, these are more they these are also universal uh narratives, but they can also, you know, be used. The universal narratives can be used to like push forward a you know, some like comedy shit. Nigga. Oh my god, he's going to get killed. He's dead. Is that a new record? <laughs> Wowzers. Alright, I'm going to help one more time. And then I'm going to do Maria. Um, because I, I can't be playing this game for this long. I've been on for like an hour or so. Uh, Brian, women have no agency. Don't work out. Abyss Watcher fight comes later in the game after this guy. No, there's no Abyss Watchers in this in this game. After this guy comes the living failures because you go into the research uh, hall, which is like this giant spiral, like multiple floors, like a building. And at the top of that is a big sunflower plant that's clearly like not of this world, and that's where the living failures are. And then when you beat them. The very next room is um, the Astral Clock Tower, where you fight Maria. Uh, yes, both he and his wife, both white Christians, thinking was thinking more of the weather. Okay. I already read that part. Uh, I didn't know you... Um, Elong, rebels are Viet Congs. Yeah, probably. I could see it. I mean, that... Well, no, the Ewoks are Viet Cong, right? Isn't that, isn't that, doesn't that explain why, you know, the Empire lost in Return of the Jedi? And it's not racist to say that. Uh, isn't Abyss Watchers Dark Souls 3? Yes, it is. I know there's a boss with a similar name. I'm not sure that's what you're talking about. No, there's nothing like, in this DLC, there's just Ludwig the Accursed who we're fighting right now, literally the first boss of the DLC is this guy that everyone's struggling on. Then, it's, um... 
Uh, well, it depends on the order, but it could be the Living Failures, or you can go back and do Lawrence, the first Vicar. And then it's Maria, and then it's the, uh, the Orphan of Cause. And those are all the bosses in the DLC. Boom. God damn it, get out of there! Get out of there, guys. Get out of there. Don't get too... Don't get underneath him. You're gonna get fucked. You know, I don't know why he... Oh. I don't know why people say that that charge is so hard to dodge. Hey, he didn't get hit by the first attack. Good omen, yeah. I was just thinking real game and Bloodborne comic. Come on guys, we can do this. We can do this, I can feel it. Just don't, look, dude, don't. Don't take those hits. Get back, get back, get back, get back, get back. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. You gotta like not dash away from this guy when he's doing that. Oh, you know what? I'm using the wrong weapon, I think. Oop, oop, oop. Ah! Uh! Give me that! I'm gonna get out of there. Oh, fuck. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's just a confederate. We can still do this. Yeah, this like instinct I have to dodge sideways, it's like, or away, it's a big mistake.
Oh my god. No! <laughs> Come on, kill him! Oh, he got him, he got him. He got him. Like, he, he, st he better have. He staggered him, and that should have been it. Get a visceral in there. If Even if he survives that, a couple more hits. Yes, that's the Moonlight Greatsword. All right, so uh, I think well, you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna go over here and ring the bell and see if he if he uh, brings me in. We don't know that the fight is won for sure. I'm gonna check. I mean, he should have won. He should have won, but. Shadow Wolf, I haven't played Bloodborne. I want to will once I get the console for it. Yeah, I mean, um, I think Bloodborne, it's, I mean, it's just, it's, it's clearly, it's, for me anyway, it's like one of the best games on the console. It's a real shame. You know, do you guys watch Max Derrett's videos? Uh, if you don't, you should. They're really good. He basically does these, like, well, specifically when he does film and video game analyses, because he's been getting it really into Carl Jung and uh, the subconscious mind and this, this kind of psychological stuff. And really good films and games will, will sort of utilize the symbolism. And he, he did a video recently about The Lighthouse, which is this black and white film that came out that was directed by the same guy who made The Witch a few years back. And I watched The Lighthouse, I enjoyed it. And when I saw other people make analyses of it, I felt that um, they were missing the mark and they were sort of like looking at things at too much of a surface level because they were like, oh, I think this is a film about masculinity and like toxic masculinity and like, you know, the, the Lighthouse represents a phallus and, you know, sexual release and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, you're... You're just projecting your own, like, shit on there. And, and I wouldn't even say it's like a Rorschach where, like, you know, the director puts some symbols in there and none of it means anything and he's just letting people, like, reflect. I think that there is... There is something to it that goes far deeper than what a lot of reviewers, you know, claim, right? I think a lot of, a lot of it has to do with the fact that, you know, most reviewers are not thinking about these things deeply. They just, you know, believe what they believe and they just shove it in there. But I would say that it's an interesting counterpart to The Witch, because The Witch, in a lot of ways, is about the power of the feminine. It is... I guess people say it's a feminist film. Um, I don't think so. I think it's, I think it's a, a, a cautionary tale about the feminine. Um, and I, I did enjoy The Witch. But uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you guys saw it and you know what I mean. Also, but the lighthouse definitely was good, and and in that he basically goes into how Jungian it is, how much of it you know is about the subconscious, how much is it, of it is about um, you know Greek uh, myth, and so much right. There's so much to it, and Max made the best video on the lighthouse that I've seen, easily the best video on it. It's not partisan. It's not political. It's not bullshit. He's like just looking at it for what it is. And it's, I think it's so good that it exposes something that I've said about people who try to make uh, media, whether it's film, television, video games, or even music that has a story or has a narrative or has a message. If they are honest and they're not legitimately trying to make propaganda, and they're actually exploring something, right? And they're trying to be truthful with what they're putting out there. Even if they actually do have a bias, if they're trying to be honest in the presentation, even if they think that what they're presenting is something that is feminist or something that is leftist or something that is, you know, conservative, whatever it is they're trying to put out there. If they're being honest as they're sort of putting everything together because they're trying to make the best possible product. So if the, if the final product is the goal, they will have themes in there that transcend their bias, whether they mean to or not, in my opinion. And I think The Lighthouse is a good example of that because I think Eggers is the guy's name who directed it. And basically he wanted to be like, oh, 
Yeah, like he did say, well, the lighthouse represents a phallus. He did say that in an interview. And that, you know, it was on some level about masculinity. But because he was exploring Jungian archetypes, because he was looking at these things, he was trying to make, like, a film beyond just that. He was trying to go deeper. Even though he had a bias going in, he ended up making something far deeper than he thought. No pun intended, since there's a lot of water involved and, and the subconscious is sort of like what the film is ultimately about in a lot of ways. He ends up doing something legitimate. And I think it's because the, the symbolism and the ideas that transcend our politics, we cannot escape them if we're trying to be honest, right? Archetypes are not a bad thing. Archetypes help us define the world. It's basically how we put things together. So, I wish that Max, who does a really good job of, of like uh, exploring these themes in video games and movies, would play Bloodborne. Because he would have a fucking field day. Now, guys like Vati Vidya, who I saw somebody mention, he does an amazing job at explaining the lore amazing and it's sure there's some speculation but it's so well done with all of the games that he goes into okay and there's a lot of other people that do a good job i think there's like one sunlight blade and is it sunlight blade or moonlight blade i think it's sunlight blade and like a couple of other guys that make like you know specifically make dark souls and bloodborne and sekiro content and demon souls content content but they don't get into the symbols enough like the meanings and and bloodborne is just like right it's so rich with shit okay it looks like this guy beat um ludwig which is good so i'm gonna go to the astral clock tower now and we're gonna give maria a fight uh, a try and see how it goes I miss Max. Yeah, well, uh, he needed... I think he needs to do things his way. And he's doing really well. He's got, like, fucking... He's getting close to 100,000 subscribers, or he's over 100,000. He's doing really well. So, I'm happy for him. I'm gonna repair my weapons. And, um... Let's, let's just... Let's get it. Give it a try. Uh, they were all Freudians, you mean? Max's videos. No, he's in the Jung now. Or at least he's been doing it a lot lately. One of those non-political movie critics. Lame. The penis symbol fall fallacy. Oh, I get it. Yeah, this is where I fought the living failures. Is that not a fucking weird-ass fucking flower? This is what I mean, like, man, this is so good! So imaginative! It's just fucking out there. How do you... What the fuck is this world? It's so great! People are missing out. I know people really want Bloodborne to come to PC. I don't think that's ever gonna happen. Um, it's an exclusive. But I do think that the that everybody's missing out on it, so. And a lot of people want a Bloodborne too. A part of me does, but I also think like, I don't know. Do we really need it? All right, let's try to fight Maria. This is my first time ever fighting her, so I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna get my ass kicked. Um, I wonder what I could use on her item wise. I guess I could use Augur of a Briatas, but I'm gonna try this without without that. Fuck it, let's just go.
All right. There was a rumor that um, I heard pretty recently that Konami is looking to make a Castlevania game inspired by Bloodborne. Uh, if they get the right people for that, they could do a really, really good job. They could. That would be another way that people could get like a, a taste of Bloodborne too, I, I, I suppose. Bloody Maria. Uh, there, w there are apparently rumors of a PC port for Bloodborne, according to Google results. Yeah, there are rumors, but I don't see how that's going to happen. The doll in Hunter's Dream is based on her. Yes, I know. All right, let's 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 do this. Let's see what happens. Hunter fights are, are can be really fucking hard. The voice actress for Maria is the same voice actress of the doll in The Hunter's Dream, as well as the voice actress of the Maiden in Black from Demon Souls. Oh, I know very well how the secrets beckon so sweetly. Only an honest man will kill you now. <laughs> from your wild curiosity. Okay, okay, bitch. <laughs> I'm gonna try her again. Given Konami's recent track record, I'm not holding my breath. I need to go home, have a nice dream. Weird tactic. Yeah, I know. I'm working on it. I'm, in, I'm trying to refine it. <laughs> Stand there and get killed is my tactic. It didn't work out. I mean, it did. It did exactly what I wanted to do. For some reason, I didn't have a gun out. Okay. I don't know what that was about. That was my problem. I went to shoot her, and I literally did not have a gun in my hand. <laughs> what does that do? It's just a punch? <laughs> no, I didn't mean to do that. That's my mistake. Alright. Whoa. What?
Okay. Oh my goodness. Uh oh. Oh, what? All right. Is this the real world or in the nightmare? Uh, this is in the nightmare, I believe. This is the old hunters DLC, which is in the old hunters nightmare. I got this. I base my character on uh, uh, Peter Cushing, in case you guys are wondering. Do you guys remember Peter Cushing from the uh, Hammer movies? He played Grand Moff Tarkin. I gave him a beard, but that's what I was going for. I let, From those old Hammer movies, the Victorian horror films from the 1970s. I gotta stay close to her, I think. Cause that range. character kind of looks like Uncle Sam. That was some anime shit. Drawing attack that goes really far. I know. Of course. <laughs> it's still a Japanese game. Actually, she's kind of fun to fight, though. I've lost a couple times, but it doesn't feel unfair. Reminds me of fighting Artorias. Sort of. I mean, obviously, she's faster. I think, I think I'm going to stay with this weapon. It's my best one. Where's the, uh, where are my blood echoes? What? Gotcha, bitch! <laughs> oh. 
put this uh, on your chest again. Okay. I got, I got close. I got close. All right, I'm going to try one more time, win or lose. I got to go because I got work I got to do. So it's fine. I'll get her. She's not actually that bad. I was, I was psyching myself out. She's not that bad. Um, she does a pre it's pretty good because first she fights you like a normal hunter. And then, you know, you kind of like get to know her moveset and stuff as you fight against her. And then... When you get her down to like a, I don't know, two thirds or whatever, she like goes into, um, she, I don't know, bloodies the weapons, I guess, and powers herself up. And then she has like a lot of the same attacks, but she doesn't use her gun anymore. And they just like, it's just like the same thing. It's just taking it a step further. So there's like a little bit more complication, a little bit more challenge. And then at the end, I think this is the last phase where she basically like puts fire on her weapon. So it essentially adds another layer of complexity, but it's not unfair. So she's actually not bad. I mean, it's, it's, she is fun to fight. Reminds me of, again, reminds me of Artorias. I should have just um, healed up, but I was afraid to stop. No, that was too short. I'm going to do another one. Uh, her last phase is similar to Abyss Watchers. Yeah. Hey, Ken. You're just in time for me to basically quit. I'm going to give this another shot, and then I'm going to quit. That was really short, so... We need that spleen. One thing I don't like is the timing on this on this could be pretty fucking awful. Uh oh. Give me that. Titty twisters for everybody. It's not quite 11 yet. I'll do one more. <laughs> Feels like a powered up Sister Frida at the end. 
Yeah, a lot of people say Sister Frida is reminiscent of uh, Lady Maria. Remember, Sister uh, Dark Souls th 3 came out after Bloodborne. Um, I think that that's by design. I think that they wanted to like do a callback to uh, Lady Maria. Um, but Sister Frida is a lot easier than that. What the fuck? I'm fucking up. I'm gonna do this again. That explains the Bloodborne-esque monsters. Yeah, they they definitely, like, the Bloodborne monster designs influenced the monsters from Dark Souls 3. There was a lot of, like, tall, scrawny characters. Like, the when you go to the Undead Settlement, uh, all the uh, undead that's there that you have to fight against, they're very similar to like the uh, to sort of like the basic human enemies from Bloodborne. Like they even use the same farming tools and shit. There's a lot of Bloodborne uh, influence in Dark Souls. In Dark Souls 3. Oh, now you delay, bitch! What the fuck? Oh my god. I'm like, dropping the ball. Road of Sacrifices, yeah. Yeah, that's, it's, it's, that's the, that's the, that's true. When you compare it to Dark Souls 1, for sure. All right, I'm 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 seriously gonna quit now, but I feel like I just like got worse. You ever notice that? Ever had that happen to you where you're like doing really well and then you fail and then you go in again after that and you're like somehow doing worse? You're like, why am I doing worse? That's how I feel right now. I don't understand it. It doesn't add up. Nope. What? What is this move that you're doing now? What is that? Give me that.
All right. You can have the day, Maria. That's fine. I'm going to get out of here. I got to work. Uh, shit like this is why women think they can fight men IRL. <laughs> All the women in media beat your ass. The tracking in that combo is pretty crazy. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, I gotta go. I gotta get to doing the shit that I'm supposed to be doing. So thanks, guys, for hanging out. Um, I actually, I'm I'm having fun with this boss. A part of me doesn't really want to beat her right away, anyway. But I am gonna keep trying. I think I'm getting pretty close. She's honestly not that bad. I'm actually now I'm like really worried about Orphan of Cause, though. I feel like that's gonna be fucking ch crazy. But, uh, if you guys uh, could, you know, get smash like for me or something, that'd be cool. And, yeah, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks, guys, for hanging out, and I'll talk to you later.